Take two. Welcome to the Ring of Fire. It's uh, Jonathan Senor Smoke. I bid you welcome. This video, we are going to talk about a question that's been posed to me a lot lately, and that is uh, if I had to put in an electric slash pellet grill <clears throat> into installed into an outdoor kitchen, which one would I go with? So let's talk about the landscape. Typically, this was the domain of Memphis with their Memphis Pro, their Memphis Elite. Uh, 29 inches or 28 and then 39 inches, I believe, for the big elite. Um, Traeger has uh, gotten into the category as well with the release of the newish Timberlines that came out last spring. Um, truth be told, I haven't seen anybody, at least the ones that we've sold, uh, use them in an outdoor kitchen. They're still wheeling them in and out on a cart. I think that they're too big. <clears throat> they're too big to go into an outdoor kitchen. It's going to take up too much room, especially if you're going to go build that induction cooktop into the countertop. But that's just my two cents. Um, the third player, I'm talking major players right now. I know there are some other companies that allow for built-ins, but we don't, we don't deal with them. Um, <clears throat> it's Coyote. A Coyote has a 28-inch, and they have one that's in the mid-30s. Now, this is the one that I have sold, numerous ones this, uh, this past season, in outdoor kitchens, and I'm receiving rave, rave, rave reviews about them, and a lot of very, very yummy pictures being sent from customers who are using them. So what is the big deal about this grill? Well, first of all, if we're going to compare it to the Memphis, right off the bat, you're talking about a thousands, plural, difference in price with dollars, okay? Huge. Now, um, I can understand if the Memphis was hand-built, handcrafted in the heartland of the United States, which it was at one point, but it's not. It's coming offshore like the Coyote is. So um, why it's um, double the price or whatever it is, it's kind of astounding to me. Okay, they have new technology they built into it. They, they have Wi-Fi. I'm gonna get into the Wi-Fi in a second because that, that could be a problem. Um, I simply don't get it. I don't. And I think that Memphis, if you take the elite, okay, the big one, which is now pushing $7,000, I think that Memphis has come to a realization, especially as we're all trying to tighten our belts in some capacity with the inflationary environment that we're all operating in, is that to ask for almost $7,000 on a pellet grill when there is other competition out there, there, is, there are other options out there, may be a tough ask. I wouldn't be surprised if at some point Maybe they're going to lower prices on them. We'll have to see. That's on Memphis. But one of the reasons why the Coyote is gaining so much traction, great, great line, great marketing, great line of uh, a lot of depth in terms of their offerings. What it does not have is the Wi-Fi. Now, I am not a Wi-Fi proponent. Um, any of my grills that are Wi-Fi capable, I don't use it. I don't use it in my, the, our indoor appliances. The more of that shit that is built in, it's just going to be room for problems. Um, as I have sold Traeger for six plus years now, what are the problems that we have with Traeger grills? It's always about firmware and Wi-Fi and this and that, and, and it's just a headache. So there are ways to go about your cooks. And I get it that there are gear heads out there, tech heads that just want to watch things on the phone and you know share your cooks with friends and social media and this. And I get it. I'm just not that way, okay? I guess I'm a Luddite of sorts. But um, the Coyote has proven that you don't need the Wi-Fi to kick ass and make great, great smoked food or grilled food for that matter because you can grill on it. But um, they don't have the Wi-Fi and that's a good thing for them because <clears throat> anybody who has Wi-Fi is right now dealing with the wrath of Traeger because from what I understand there's a lawsuit going on because Traeger feels that they have uh, patented the use of Wi-Fi um, on any outdoor cooking appliance. but. Um, <clears throat> I'll leave my wife, the lawyer, the one to, to go into that. I'm not going to touch it right now. But um, so there are options. So I'm working in uh, two projects right now where they're like, what do I do? What do I do about the electric smoke? Or do I do, I do a Kamado? Well, you know, I love Kamados. That's always going to be my preferred choice because I love just cooking with live fire like a caveman but i get it that there are many folks out there who don't want to deal with stoking a fire they don't want to deal with charcoal lighting it up they don't want to play with air dampers they want to set it and forget it essentially they want an outdoor oven and that's what the built-in pellet grill is going to do so i would say focus on memphis and coyote 
balance out the pros and the cons of each. But remember, they're both coming from the same source in terms of the country that they're built in. So you're not getting this artisanal USA crafted, et cetera, et cetera, narrative uh, with Memphis anymore. So they're all coming from the same area. Drop that. Then it's the way it's built. I mean, we have them both in here. I always welcome people to open them up, feel them do that do the kick the tire test and um I, you know, I will say somebody who's owned in memphis for seven years now some of the best cooks i've ever had came off that grill i just think that looking at the math and looking at the environment we're all operating in right now you may have to ponder that decision a bit more it's a big nut in terms of the delta between them price wise anyway the good news is we sell them both so whatever one you decide, we can procure it for you. That's it. Any questions, hit me up. Questions at rofgrills.com. We are here to serve. Thank you.